For those of you um, who are just joining us today, I'm Jessica Nickel, the Director and Chief Curator of the Smith College Museum of Art, and I'm so pleased to see you all here on this pretty snowy morning. Um, before we get started today, I just have a few organizational announcements to go over as we think about the day ahead. And the first is to ask again that you remember to turn off your cell phones so that we're not interrupted during our discussion this morning. Um, the second is that I'm very sad to be the bearer of the disappointing news that for health reasons, neither Paula Cooper nor Roberta Smith is able to be here today. I know, it's disappointing, but the great news is, um, the news that I'm grateful to report is that Leah Freed of Lombard Freed Projects in New York is here to join us for the panel on the business of art. So it still promises to be an incredibly rich uh, and lively discussion a little bit uh, later this morning. This morning's panels will focus on the core of this symposium's goal, which is to provide an honest look at the realities of establishing a career as an artist. So we've got two panel sessions coming up, which will really delve into the issues associated with that. And then at noon, we'll be breaking for lunch, which will be available in the Campus Center, which is the large uh, modern white building just across the way from us. And an important announcement is that your name tag is your lunch ticket. So there'll be box lunches up on the second floor. And if you can just remember to take your name tag uh, with you, they will happily hand you one. We will reconvene here at 1 o'clock this afternoon for a discussion with two recent, recent graduates of Smith College who both received their MFAs in 2009. And we want to offer you the option of either coming back here right at 1 o'clock or um, staying in the Campus Center to linger over coffee and view the panel via a live feed in the Carroll Room, which is on the second floor over there. But then we uh, urge you to be back here promptly at 1.45 for the concluding uh, session in the symposium, which will be a presentation by Lucy Lepard. Uh, I want to just also remind you about opportunities to view and experience art on campus while you're here. If you haven't yet uh, had a chance to experience Susan Hiller's audio installation, What Every Gardener Knows at the Botanic Gardens, that space is open now and will remain open until 4 o'clock today, and the Museum of Art is also open until 4 o'clock today. So there might be time within the lunch hour to take a visit to one of those spaces. And then finally, I wanted to highlight for you a really wonderful opportunity at the conclusion of today's program, uh, which is uh, the opportunity to attend a screening of Joan Braderman's films, film The Heretics, a documentary about the Heresies Project, a group of feminist artists and writers who, who were committed to social change, and Lucy Lepard was one of the founding members. The filmmaker Joan Braderman is here with us, and she'll be available for a question and answer session after the screening of the film, which is scheduled to take place at 3.30 this afternoon in Sealy Room 101, and um, staff here can direct you to Sealy Hall if you're interested in attending that. Now I'd like to turn the stage over to Susan Heidemann, professor of painting and moderator of a panel titled Making Choices, Making a Living, Making Art. And so please join me in welcoming Susan and our panelists, Rebecca Morris, Casey Rubel, and Esther Pullman. Good morning. I'm Susan Heidemann, a painter and a professor of painting and drawing in the Smith Art Department, where I've been teaching since 1976. My continuing studio practice has always been central to my existence. It enables my teaching and, with luck, occasionally even makes it effective. Professionally, I've had a long and checkered exhibition record that includes the good, the bad, the ugly, and the completely inconsequential. <laughs> Before our panel members introduce themselves, I'd like to say a very few words about this session. Franz Kafka famously wrote, art is the ax that breaks the frozen sea within us. However, for the contemporary artist, hacking away at frozen seas is nothing compared to the Sisyphusian boulder rolling up the mountain of getting her work out, finding its audience, and keeping it bobbing along in the treacherous, clamorous waters of contemporary art. Thus, we commence with frank chat about rolling those boulders. First, each artist is going to introduce herself via a series of short answers to fact-based biographical questions I distributed in advance. 
As she speaks, I'll be showing three images of her work. Uh, it's a shame that we don't have a format in which you can see more of these artists' work. So do check out their websites, and in the case of Esther, her beautiful photograph that's currently in an in installation in the first floor of the museum. Okay, we're starting uh, alphabetical order according to last name. <laughs> Is that me? That is you. Oh <laughs> I'm not used to being first with Morris. Um, I was really hoping to not go first. Um, I, have, I do not have the question straight, so I'm just going to try to remember. Um, okay, I was class of 91 at Smith, and I think we all went to Smith here on the panel today, so that's kind of cool. Um, I went to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago for um, my Master's of Fine Arts. I attended the Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture. And, um, uh, dear, um, I'm a little nervous, so can you, what are the... Prompt I, you? Yeah, please. Where do you live? Well, I live in Los Angeles. I've lived there for 11 years. I own a home. Yes. Remember that question. <laughs> are you living alone or with a partner? I live with my boyfriend and my cat. And, um, but I bought the house by myself. Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, and, um, it's very- Rent or own studio? Oh, I rent a studio. I, it's outside of my home and it's in downtown Los Angeles. It's a very quick drive. It was really nice when I bought my house. I had no idea how close it was to my studio and it's really close. So that's wonderful. Uh, my studio is like about 550 square feet. It's, uh, I really love it. Um, and, my job, is that a question? Yeah. yeah, how many paying jobs do you have, I have besides your, <laughs> <laughs> besides um, maybe your art? <laughs> Lately I've had two paying jobs, the first being my artistic career, and um, then I am also a associate professor of painting at Pasadena City College in Pasadena, California, and I've taught there since 2000, um, and... Yeah. And you have medical insurance. I do, I do. This is the great thing about my job. At first, I was a little ambivalent about teaching. Um, I was really worried that it would hurt my art career, which, you know, was sort of on its way. And uh, I was, I got this job remarkably, and uh, I kept it um, and kept going with it. But one of the greatest things about it is that I do have this whole package deal for grounding my life, and that has fa that has actually been the secret. I think, for me. One last question. Gallery affiliation? Yes. I'm represented by Gallery Barbara Weiss in Berlin, Germany. Okay. Thanks. Esther, you're next. Okay. Um, I graduated from Smith in nine... Oh, yes. <laughs> we were practicing yesterday. Hold it so. close. Okay. <laughs> um, I graduated from Smith in 1964 as an art major. I immediately went to Yale in uh, graphic design. I felt um, that I needed the structure of being a um, artist that responded to client-based uh, problems. I knew all my life I wanted to be an artist, but I didn't think I had the structure and the gumption to do it as a uh, full-fledged uh, self-directed artist, but I'll probably say more about that later. Um, I then, in the early 90s, I decided I did want to be an artist, um, and I went back to school self-directed in photography and with the idea of becoming a professional art photographer. I, um, I have no studio, I have no paying job, I have no children, I have one husband, and I've, and I've managed to keep him for 42 years. <laughs> I have two dogs, I have two residences which we own, a uh, house in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and a summer cottage north of Boston in a place called Anasquam. And I have three different galleries that, in um, a modest way, I would say, represent my work. Uh, primarily Victoria Monroe in Boston, where I had a one-person show um, September of 2008. And 
possibly a fourth gallery, I've been asked to have a show this fall in Honolulu. Thank you. Casey. All right, I made a list also. Um, so I uh, graduated from Smith in 95. I took three years off before going to Hunter for my MFA and um, did that program part-time. So it took me four years and I finished in 2002. Um, I recently moved from Brooklyn. I had been in New York since finishing or since starting Hunter, and I recently moved out to a more rural area in New Jersey, where I rent my house and live with a partner. Although I've lived alone for the past nine years, I have no kids. Um, I have a studio in my home. That's how I've always preferred to work. Um, I technically have three paying jobs in addition to whatever uh, I make off of my art, um, my paintings. They are uh, teaching at Fordham as an artist in residence, um, doing some freelance editing for W.W. W. Norton, and uh, which I started doing in graduate school. It was a great way to get through graduate school. Um, and uh, doing a little bit of writing for Art in America, although that's more a labor of love because <laughs> art publishing is not particularly lucrative. Um, I get medical insurance through Fordham. I have a car. I think that was another question yes, on there. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> and um, I'm represented by Foley Gallery in New York City. Thank you. All right, so now you have the bare facts. We'll fill them out with intrusively... Uh, pointed questions, which I hope we'll get frank answers to. Um, we'll start gently. I'm going to ask each of you the following. When you started your studio practice, what didn't you know then about being an artist that you know now? And had you known it then, would you have persisted? Anyone? I, I'll, I'll go first because I actually made a list. And um, <laughs> it, it was a great surprise to me how many things uh, I had no idea about. And I'll start with um, the idea that you have to sell yourself. It's a hard job. I didn't know about fabrication and its costs, framing, insurance, storage, Exhibition design, pricing, bookkeeping, inventory, <laughs> sales tax, <laughs> negotiation, and computer skills. And I would say um, you spend much more time than you would ever imagine on all of these things. Well. I have to be honest, I didn't really think too much about doing this career as an artist thing. I just wanted to do it. It never, I didn't think about it. I just wanted to be an artist and I, I did it. So uh, I just took it one step at a time. Um, of course, there are these moments that happen where you're like, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> like, it costs a lot of money to live and to produce your work. And uh, I still think how much money it takes to sort of have a certain quality of life and make your artwork, and it's an astronomical amount. Um, I wouldn't, there's nothing that's happened to me that would ever have changed my mind about the direction that I've chosen in my life. I'm very, I feel very strongly that um, I've made the right decisions uh, for myself up to this point, and I just hope I can keep doing that. 